Hey everybody, welcome back to Half Ass. As always, I'm here and I'm joined by Andrew. And today we have a special video for our first shots off of the PO9 Nocturne, which is brand new from CZ. What we have is a compact model. They have a compact and a full size. No more PO7 for you CZ fans out there, but uh, this gun didn't disappoint. Before we dive into that, we have our giveaway going on. Don't forget to slap the subscribe button. Give us a like, comment, subscribe on the channel. It helps us in this channel grow, helps the 2A community grow, as we know we should all be supporting each other because we're one of the most ostracized communities on the planet, especially in the United States. We're probably the only country that actually has this problem. But And by the way, 90% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Give us an idea for another review, another video. Keep the conversation rolling and keep up to date with what we're doing out here. That's the best way to support the channel. 100%. It's free. doesn't cost you anything, but it does support us. Before we dive in, we have our giveaway going on. We have the M17 Surplus. You're entered to win by being a sub. Plain and simple. If you're curious what an M17 Surplus is, go to gunbroker.com. Type in M17 Surplus, and you'll get all the questions answered for yourself. But this gun is one of the first before they became a actual military item. It was during trial. So really rare gun. Good for military and gun collectors alike. All right. Take us into the Nocturne. So anybody familiar with CZ pistols is familiar with the PO7 and the PO9. Now, polymer frame, hammer fire, concealed carry style guns are a dying breed. However, there are still so many people out there that love that type of pistol. I know SIG was super popular back in the day. There's that one weird hammer fire Glock from the Ant-Man movie. We'll talk about that one. <laughs> And then we have kind of the uh, the Beretta PX4s and then the CZs. I mean, those were really kind of the kings of the field. Now, a lot of people got really terrified a couple months ago and started rushing into the gun store because they heard that the PO7 was being discontinued. Wasn't it all? Well, the rumor was all polymer frame CZs were being yeah. discontinued? Yeah, the rumor was that CZ was dropping all polymer frame guns, which was preposterous because the P10 is such a great pistol. Best Glock 19 ever made. So we actually called CZ and we asked them what was going on and all they would tell us is that the PO7 was going away and something would be replacing it. So we asked if we could get hands on one as quickly as possible. So this is our PO9 Compact Nocturne. Now, what this, does Nocturne mean, Andrew? Nocturne is a piece of music inspired by the night which is why the box looks like the batmobile i'm assuming by the way the, the new boxes are really cool now and way easier to open way easier yeah. to open yeah this pistol has so many sweet upgrades over the original po7 and po9 so we're going to get into that and kind of talk about it and we're going to show you guys some video of us shooting it out of the range first of all it cannot be understated that uh these serrations are amazing so these serrations are very similar to something you would see from like a custom faxon slide or an ed brown slide or maybe even like some custom work from jaeger works or something like that this gun feels like a custom gun right out of the box we do have some night sights on it from the factory but they are like a luminescent paint so they do kind of need to be charged up a little bit they remind me of the sig light night sights. yeah like the old school sig the controls on these guns are oversized compared to what the old PO7 used to be. So the controls feel absolutely amazing. Speaking of controls, it's the Omega architecture. So anybody familiar with CZ75s knows that the Omega means that you can switch between having a safety and having a decocker. So whether or not you like to carry cocked and locked, or if you want to carry with hammer down with a decocker, you can do either or with this gun, which is such a cool concept. A lot of people love that in the CZ-75. Speaking of the trigger, holy crap, the single action on this trigger is amazing. Even for a tiny little compact gun, when I was slowing down out on the range and I was really trying, I was really able to put some hits on that bullseye. We had a little bit of an issue with the sight, but we're going to get into that a little bit later. Nothing, no. nothing mechanically wrong. No, no, just a yeah. little bit of drift needed. The hammer spur feels absolutely great, just like the great CZ hammers. And the grip texturing is perfect. We, I think I mentioned this out in the range, but uh, 
man, I'm, I've shot MNPs for a really long time, and I always kind of compare grip textures to that super aggro MNP 2.0. This feels almost as effective, but nowhere near as aggressive, which is a very interesting kind of concept that they accomplished a lot of what Smith & Wesson did without me feeling like maybe it's going to tear my shirt apart if I wear it like appendix carry, which sometimes I do ruin clothes with my M&Ps. So this gun feels amazing to shoot. Man, I, just, I know this is just the first shots. It's not a full comprehensive review, but wow, I like this gun. <laughs> so out of the box, we caught, oh my God, the shotgun video, the Mac video. Everybody and their mother, well, not everybody and their mother, but there's a large contingent of comments around there. It's like, read the instruction manual, idiot. And you're like, yeah, we did. This is not our first rodeo, but unfortunately, your customer base doesn't read instructions, and we yeah. wanted to go through and experience what the average consumer that shops at our store experiences. You re answer the questions that our customers experience. You always read terms and conditions before you press accept. A hundred percent, absolutely. Yeah, everything. <laughs> so, the what well, when we do these types of videos, especially the first shots videos and things like that, we pull a gun out of the box, load it with ammunition, and shoot it because that's what our customers do. Yeah, I, I, the amount of times I've seen a customer buy a brand new Glock or a brand new Smith, head directly into the gun range, ask for a box of nine mil, and take those first shots right there. This gun never saw a drop of gun oil. This gun barely breathed fresh air. It went directly into the gun range. It was the, in the building for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, less than five minutes after the post office dropped it off, we were in the range shooting this gun. No oil, no nothing. We didn't even spit on that thing. We just took it in Fuck there, to it. and we just did it. So we won't bore you too much with the buttons and switches, beeps and clicks. Uh, we did go to the range, did some testing with it, so we're going to take you out there now. Hey everybody, welcome to the range today. Today we're reviewing an awesome, freaking sweet gun. It is the P09 Nocturne. This one specifically is the compact version. They've gotten rid of the P07, now you have the P09 Nocturne, P09 Compact Nocturne. So, we're gonna go through some of the buttons and switches that they changed, but just playing with this thing out of the box, we literally just got hands on it like five minutes ago. It's been in the building for about three minutes and we came straight to the gun range. I am so excited. Firstly, I love CZ. The box is so much cooler than the old CZ boxes. And easier to open. And absolutely way easier <laughs> to open. So, we're gonna run through the buttons and switches or during the video in the, in the studio. Tabletop. Like, tabletop, there you go. T -t -t Today in the range. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm stuttering. So today, this portion, we're just gonna shoot the shit out of it. So, we're gonna cut back and forth, do some drills as always, and then walk through some of the new things that we like, don't like. We have never shot this gun. Uh, we've shot P07s, P09s back in the day. This thing, I am so excited for. This gun feels so nice. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. So, all right, we're gonna cut to loading some mags and then we're gonna do some shooting. So, hang in with us. All right, these are gonna be our first shots with the new CZ P09 Compact Nocturne. First impressions, I love the way the grip feels. The new slide serrations are very, very similar to maybe like a Jaeger Works customized gun if anybody's ever had hands on with one of those. Of course, we're optics ready. And something I did not realize in all the promotional materials, the controls are all sized up from the older generation of pistols. So these feel so great in the hand. Everything feels super nice and easy to use. And it does come with night sights right out of the box. So let's get some rounds down range and try this sucker out. Ooh. We're gonna start on that double action pull. A couple of hammer pairs. That feels nice. <laughs> it is smooth, very smooth. Trigger resets like a dream. That single action break is so short and so crisp. Very similar if you guys have ever shot a P07 or P09 in the past. Similar trigger, I do feel maybe a little bit improved. The way that the bow is shaped where it's a little bit more vertical when the hammer's cocked, kind of makes it feel a little bit more like a 1911 trigger. So quite nice. We're gonna get a couple more rounds loaded in. We're gonna see if we can maybe shoot a little faster and maybe do some accuracy shooting too. 
Okay, we got a couple more mags loaded up. We're gonna see if we can get some speed out of this new trigger that they got in here. These are really, really similar to the Omega series CZ75, so you can swap out this decocker for a safety if you want, which I think is a really cool concept. It wasn't super popular in the 75 line, but I think in a more concealed carry focused pistol, that will be a really cool addition. I braced a little bit on that one. <laughs> We're trending a little bit to the left. Make a little bit of an adjustment, see if maybe it's just my sights. Zach gave me an extra round on that. He did. Perfect bullseye. I don't know. This gun's smooth. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to come in a frame real quick. <laughs> so, a little, little uncommon for how this should be shot. But, so I'm standing behind the camera, and one of the things that you can judge sitting on the side is how the cartridges are ejecting from the gun. And it looks like a waterfall. Yeah. The, the, every cartridge is coming out of the gun at the same trajectory the whole time, which tells me that you're controlling the shit out of this gun, and it's just operating smoothly. It feels really good. It's pretty wild to watch this thing. It's just a trail of casings just flying past me in the same arc at the same height. It's gorgeous. It doesn't, it doesn't feel oversprung. It doesn't feel snappy. The, the amount of texturing in the grip feels perfect. I mean, these are just first impressions. I'm sure I might have different opinions after a couple thousand shots, but I think it's an improvement over the original PO7 and PO9. I'll say that. I love the aggressive slide serrations. I really do. All right, let's, uh, let's go a little bit for accuracy here. We have nine shots loaded up. Let's see what we can do to that bullseye. Very smooth, very recoverable. I never felt like I had to adjust my grip throughout all those shots because it just stays in my hand so well. And I, I do a lot of shooting with M&Ps and I'm kind of, kind of drawing a comparison there. The M&P I think is probably one of the best grip textures for shooting fast, but it almost feels like it's too much. Uh, this is just right almost that's it feels absolutely great in the hand and i'm controlling it so well so maybe a little personal bias but man i'd love to get a red dot on here and see what i can do with that too <laughs> let's do uh let's mix some of the slow and let's do kind of a failure to stop style drill even though we don't have a b mod target down range and let's see if we can get two in the center and then one up top nice and slow Very smooth. Okay, we're gonna go for two in the center, and then we're gonna try to hit that one ring all the way up top, just like a failure to stop drill. A little low on the top shot, that's okay. Man, I like it. You're pulling left hard. I am pulling left. I'm not compensating as much as I should be though. That one I had a left and a right, so. Feels great. I like it. What do you think? Uh, time for me to shoot it. Time for you to shoot it. So high right. So that like box up there, low left side of the box. Low left. Yeah. This sight, even looking at it now, it looks like it might need drifted a little bit. All right. All right, my turn to shoot. So. We're noticing that it's patterning a little bit to the left. Looking at the rear sight, it looks like it could be just pushed a little bit too far. Uh, second shooter on the line, we're gonna get a confirmation of that. I'm pretty sure it is. But all in all, even at 25, 20, 25 feet, the grouping on this thing for as fast as Andrew's shooting is pretty good. So I'm just gonna run some slower hammered pairs just to kind of get an idea for how it patterns. So, all right. Uh... Yep. It's definitely pushing left.
That one jumped out of my hand a little bit, had a little too loose of a grip, so that's on me. The Trust controls it. are sweet. I know. That is amazing. Yeah. I am, my aim point is probably three to six inches to the right of where the impact points are. So I think the rear sight just needs to drift a little bit. Not uncommon for new guns out of the box, especially first run, but overall, my God, this thing's smooth. It shoots awesome. Recoil impulse is sweet. I know there's adjust, there's back straps in the box. Um, the texturing, like Andrew mentioned, M&P new, the 2.0 texture is really aggressive. If you work with your hands a lot, you won't notice it, but a lot of ladies or people that are more white collar workers work on a keyboard more. We'll notice uh, with less callous hands that uh, this is a little bit better. It's not as textured as what the M&Ps are, but it has enough to hold on. I mean, I'm wearing a hoodie in the range right now. Probably shouldn't be because my hands are sweating right now. And he was sweaty hands. This thing's not jumping around too much. Oversized controls. The trigger is mind blowing for a factory trigger that's a double single. Uh, the single action is short, crisp, predictable break every time. The reset for even being a double single is really nice. Uh, and much shorter than what I would expect. So having a PO7 in the past and PO9s in the past. The reset was always good, it was just a little long. This one's sweet. The sights are really nice. Uh, it is optic cut, like Andrew said. I'm not gonna talk too much more. We're just gonna keep shooting the shell until we run out of ammo, but overall, this thing is amazing. I don't know if it's actually gonna see the shelf before uh, before this video posts, but it is it is a sweet gun. And these oversized controls are amazing. So. All right, let's get Andrew back out here. Let's run it, run it fast. All right. We got the last of our nine mil loaded up. Let's do a couple really quick build drills. Let's see what we can get out of it. Woo. I lost the trigger there for a second. Nice. That second build drill is amazing. Yeah, I was aiming two rings to the right of center and it looks like it all landed in the center. It all landed in the red. Yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah, I think the sight needs to be slid to the right just a hair, but that happens with new guns all the time, so. All right, so as you saw, Andrew got most of the trigger time. I gotta teach this guy how to use the cameras, but at the end of the day, this gun's amazing. I'll let Andrew talk to it a little bit more, uh, but we hope you enjoy the content of us shooting. If you wanna see us do some different drills, these are just things that we practice daily because these are the drills that we, we use. So if you're going to be doing content and everything else, you might as well do the drills you practice anyway. But why don't you go and walk us through your thoughts, first shots. My thoughts, first shots. So in context, my mind, I'm considering the PO7 the entire time. I'm also yeah, thinking this is of, the apples to apples comparison. Right. It's essentially the V2. I'm also thinking about kind of like the PX4 Storm. I hate that gun. Why do you hate that gun? I hate Beretta. Oh, God. It's, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Fair. It is weird. So, that being said, I, man, I, I'm having a hard time thinking of anything to not like about this gun. I, I mean, the sights could be upgraded, obviously. I mean, we had a little bit of an issue with shooting to the left, which Zach kind of did some comparison, and he was also shooting left. So, we did look, and it seems like the sight is drifted very slightly, which is not uncommon at all to see on a factory new gun. And you, let's, you're talking three to six inch deviation at 25 feet. Right. So definitely within combat accuracy. Sure. Margin of accuracy. Now, I absolutely love guns with super aggressive serrations on the slide. I'm a big fan of the PDP series for that exact reason. I'm a huge fan. A lot of my custom M&Ps, I pick them because of the really aggressive serration styles that they, they come with. And this gun does not disappoint. It's super aggressive. It reminds me of exactly what I would have done to a gun if I sent it to get them customized. This gun is essentially like if I had a P07 and I dropped it off at Monsoon Tactical or sent it to Jaeger Works or sent it to Ed Brown, I said, do this to my gun. This is what I would get back in the mail. This gun is set up amazing. Oversized controls, perfect grip texturing, optics cut for the K-style footprints. So, man, I love it. Probably my favorite part about the gun 
is the trigger. I loved the single action, specifically kind of the angle that the trigger bow sits when it's cocked. It feels like I was like resting my finger on a curved 1911 trigger. It just, it rested just right and it broke just right, nice and clean. If you are used to shooting single double guns, which I, I do shoot more striker fire nowadays, but I have a lot of experience doing double single, this gun's gonna feel amazing to you. I do think it's a substantial upgrade over the original PO7. Do I think it's gonna be as reliable as a PX4 Storm? Probably not, but you don't get this kind, these kind of features at a PX4. And for nearly the exact same price point, I don't know, maybe. What is price point on this? Like, I don't even know. Price point on these is gonna be just over $500. Okay, cool. Yeah, PX4, you're looking at maybe another 100 on top of that. Mm -hmm. But with the PX4, you're not getting optics cut. You're not getting aggressive texturing. You know, you're gonna have to go do all that somewhere else. So like Langdon, like Langdon or something like that. So if you're that double single guy, if you really like carrying a hammer fire gun in a concealed carry sense, I don't know if there's a better option for you out there than this. There are people out there that go, CZ, that's foreign junk, right? Oh. Yeah. So let me educate you for a second. CZ is one of the largest manufacturer of firearms in the world. The CZ-75, their base platform that was designed, I think, in the 50s. It was designed in 75. No, the, it's designed off the high power. Right, I think yeah, they started yeah. working on it in the 50s. But, yeah, 1975 was IOC release date. But one of, if not the, it used to be the most widely proliferated handgun in the world. A lot of people get too held up on the American market. Yes, we have a vast majority of the market. But... There are still militaries and law enforcements globally. We are a fraction of the global population. Most European and Asian law enforcement military agencies use CZ. The CZ-75 platform will test the sands of time. It is a more, it's newer to the U.S. market in the sense of it's not, wasn't as popular. I think the most foreign gun widely populated in the United States is probably Glock before they've moved over which here. is not even an american gun it's an austrian made gun that's what i'm saying right. a european import over here but made famous but cz is one of the top manufacturers in the world um they make some of the best guns in the world so they make some that are budget price point they make some that are world-class competition guns so just because you ain't heard of it doesn't mean it's not a nice gun so for all the people out there that stick their nose up at the fact that this is a check gun Educate yourself, please. So, you have anything else to add? No. All right, guys. Appreciate you taking the time to listen to us ramble on and on about this thing, but it's hard not to talk about this gun. It is absolutely phenomenal. We Don't forget we have our giveaway going on. Like, follow, subscribe for a chance to win an M17 surplus. And 90% of our viewers are not subbed. Doesn't cost you anything, guys. If you want to support the gun industry, the 2A community, slap the subscribe button. It helps us, helps promote what we're doing here. At the end of the day, two-way folks got to stick together and promote each other across the board, as long as you deserve it, because there are some tur dirty people in this industry. Some but turds. Some dirty, dirty people. But, yeah, if you like what you see, let us know. Leave us a comment below. Uh, let us know how you feel about CZ. Let us know if uh, you're excited to get your hands on shooting one of these. It does not disappoint. Uh, but you got anything else? I think I've asked you that twice already. But Hey, we're getting to that time of the year where a lot of companies are coming out with new releases. I think I even just got an email today that Savage was coming out with something new. If there are guns you guys want to see on the table, other guns you guys want to see do first shots on, leave a comment in one of our videos. If you guys are yelling at us to do it, we'll see if we can get them, and we'll try to, we'll try to make it happen. Absolutely. We want to put out content that you guys want to see. We're not doing this for our own sake. We want to put it out there and spread the gospel as much as possible. But we want to spread the word of things you guys also want to hear. Without anything else, he's Andrew. I'm Zach. We'll catch you next week.